Psychopathology, biological explanations of OCD. Now, you need to be aware of two broad um, explanations in terms of OCD. So they are genetic and neural. Now, neural can be further broken down into neurochemistry, so um, neurotransmitters, serotonin in particular, and brain structure. So if we look at the genetic explanations, now genes are believed to make a person vulnerable to OCD. So it's not necessarily saying that it's the distinct cause, but you might have a genetic predisposition or vulnerability to developing OCD. And evidence for that comes from the idea that concordance rates are higher or greater with those that share more genetic makeup. So uh, Lewis found that 37% uh, uh, of his patients had a concordance rate with their parent if they had OCD um, compared to 21% who had a sibling with OCD. So it does appear that it suggests that it does run in families and therefore supports the genetic explanation. Um, there have been several genes that have been identified because there does appear to be more than one gene involved in the development of OCD. So it appears to be polygenetic. Taylor said there could be up to uh, 230 genes in particular. But there is the CERT gene, which seems to affect the transport of serotonin and creates low levels of that neurotransmitter. We'll look at um, serotonin in a bit more detail later. So if we were to evaluate genetic explanations, we do have supporting evidence. So Billet also found through a meta-analysis of twin studies that MZ twins, so identical twins, had a concordance rate of 68% compared to DZ twins, uh, non-identical twins, of 31%. Now the higher concordance rates for MZ twins that share 100% of their genetic makeup and DNA would suggest that it appears that it is genetic as they have a higher concordance rate. However, there is a problem with using twin studies and family studies. For example, we cannot uh, separate nature and nurture. We cannot remove the environmental factors. So families will have a shared environment and in particular MZ twins, because they are identical and they look the same, they are more likely to be treated very similarly. So it could be that there are environmental factors that influence the rate and uh, development of OCD rather than genetics. So we can't separate the nature and nurture debate. Also, the fact that concordance rates aren't 100% would suggest that genetics can't play a sole cause in the development of OCD. So therefore, some environmental um, viewpoint would have to be taken into account. Neural, as I said, could be broken down into neurotransmitters. So in particular, serotonin is uh, linked to OCD. So serotonin um, is helped to regulate our mood and low levels of serotonin in particular are linked to and associated to OCD. Now, the, that conclusion has been drawn from the fact that antidepressant drugs, so SSRIs, which increase uh, the serotonin activity or increase uh, the levels of serotonin within the synapse, are believed to reduce the OCD symptoms. Whereas antidepressants that have less effect on serotonin do not reduce the symptoms of OCD. So because they treat the symptoms so um, because when you increase uh, serotonin levels it reduces the symptoms it's believed that low levels is the cause of OCD. Now the fact that this has led to effective treatment is a strength so um, SSRI so selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors which increase that level of serotonin within the synapse can reduce the OCD symptoms in 50 to 60 percent of cases. Now the fact that if we have successful treatment supports this explanation because it shows that it's based on some valid explanation. However we can't establish cause and effect. The link between serotonin 
is correlational. It could be that OCD is causing low levels of serotonin, not that low levels of serotonin are causing the OCD. So it could be a symptom rather than a cause in itself. Neural can also be broken down into abnormal brain circuits and structure. So several areas within our frontal lobe are thought to be abnormal or different from the norm in people with OCD. Now the caudate nucleus, which is located within the basal gang ganglia, if that is damaged, it fails to suppress minor worries. That means that our hypothalamus is alerted to things that it wouldn't normally be alerted to because that nucleus cannot suppress, cannot prevent, filter out worries reaching the thalamus. Therefore, it causes anxiety things and worry about things that a normal person, a person without OCD wouldn't experience. So things like potential germ hazard might be filtered out normally, but in the person with OCD, it isn't and it reaches the thalamus and it's alerted, which causes the anxiety, the stress. Now we've got, have got supporting evidence for abnormal brain circuits. So it was found that increased rates of OCD in people that had head injuries that caused damage to the basal ganglia. So it suggests that the basal ganglia does play a role in the development of OCD. However, we have contradictory evidence that there isn't a significant difference between the basal ganglia of um, people with OCD and controls, so people without OCD. Also, this is a biological explanation, so therefore it is, if we were to look at it as a whole, it is biologically reductionist. We are reducing a complex phenomena of OCD down to a single neurotransmitter, such as serotonin, down to a single gene, the SERT gene, down to a specific part of the brain, the basal ganglia. Therefore, it doesn't take into account other factors or other explanations that might be beneficial. So it could be that actually a person has OCD because they have observed and learned that behaviour through their environment, which could explain why we have that high um, concordance rates in family and twin studies. It could be that they have observed a person um, displaying characteristics and symptoms of OCD free vicarious reinforcement, so social learning theory would support this idea that they have developed it through observation, imitation of that behaviour and through some indirect reinforcement. Also, as we said, it, if we take that route, we should maybe look at an interactionist approach because um, the basal ganglia doesn't seem to play, be the sole cause. Uh, concordance rates aren't a hundred percent so maybe it's just that an environmental uh, viewpoint should be explored as well also we have the idea that the nature and nurture debate so we have the issue of um this is solely from the nature viewpoint whereas the nurture should also be considered as well you could also mention um the fact that the biological approach is very scientific and we can do brain scans um, so specific measurements of uh, levels of neurotransmitters. So it's highly scientific. Therefore, we can establish scientific credibility. And the benefits of that within research, if you want to take it a step further, you could mention that this is uh, would lead to a nomothetic approach. So um, it is creating general laws that can be applied to more than one human being. So it can explain the whole of humanity and universality. So the fact that it is saying that low levels of serotonin, it's created a general law that low levels of serotonin causes OCD. So we could have a 16 marker along this outline and evaluate one biological explanation for obsessive compulsive disorders. So this is being very specific in asking you for one explanation, not all of them. 
So make sure that you read the questions carefully. You might have uh, this, which is a previous past paper question. So two students were discussing their friends, David, who had recently been diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder. Melanie said, it wasn't surprised to me that David has OCD because his mum is always tidying things and putting them in order and checking switches. Emma says, really, I did not know that. I always thought that people with OCD have something in their brains that make them behave that way. Outline and evaluate neural and genetic explanations of obsessive compulsive disorders. Refer to the conversation above in your answer. So remember, this is broken down into your AO1, AO2 and AO3. So AO1 is worth six marks. AO2 is four marks. AO3 is six marks. So your AO1 is still worth the same amount. So you should still be writing the same amount on that. So I would do my AO1 of neural explanations, so uh, low levels of the neurotransmitter serotonin, uh, the fact that um, evidence suggests that um, if they have low levels of serotonin, it leads to the symptoms of OCD, the basal ganglia system and damage to that, uh, failing to suppress minor worries, alerting the hypothalamus. I would then talk about how that is demonstrated in the scenario above. So where is there evidence in a second paragraph of my AO2? So for example, Emma suggesting that it is something within the brain that causes OCD. So that would be, I would talk about, but this applies that it's either abnormal brain structures or levels of serotonin neurotransmitters then evaluate neural explanations. So um, supporting evidence of basal ganglia being uh, associated with o OCD, uh, supporting evidence of effective treatment of SSRIs in improving symptoms in 50-60% of cases. We could talk about um, it being biologically reductionist, so reducing it down to a single gene, um, sorry, a single neurotransmitter or a single um, area of the brain. Now, I would then move on to my AO1 of um, OCD, so genetic explanations, so the CERT gene, so specific genes that are involved in it in particular that has a link to low levels of serotonin. Um, family studies indicate that there is a genetic link or a genetic cause, so concordance rates. Um, the fact that Taylor says that it might not be one gene, it could be polygenetic, so 230 genes. My AO2 paragraph would be that Melanie suggests that he's inherited it from his mother. So it could be that his mum is always tidying and putting things in order. So that implies that he has inherited OCD from his mum. In terms of AO3 then, I talk about um, billets, supporting evidence of MZ twins and DZ twins that higher concordance rates and then um, contradictory um, evidence or problematics of studying twins and family studies is that we cannot separate nature and nurture. They have a shared environment which could result in um, then developing OCD, not the genetic factor.